right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And luckily, um, our good friend Rob Sweeney picked uh, the wrong date. Uh, he was coming in. I thought I was busy on this evening, but um, was able to get off. And um, thanks, Rob. He's coming in in March. Not in February. And I got to have dinner with Carlos Lopez de la Calle, the next generation from our Toddy Winery. This is a winery I've actually had a chance to visit in Spain, and um, I collect their wines. I have the 2004 vintage of El Pisan, one of my favorite Spanish wines, my son's birth year, that will I've kept and set aside for him when he gets old enough to drink. And um, we had a five-year vertical of El Pisan for this dinner. That's all they served. What an amazing meal. I'll tell you what, these guys at this restaurant, Alter, are putting out some phenomenal food. And... Um, the chairs, a little bit of an issue. It looked like kind of a, a elementary school chair that they bought for the restaurant. One of the more uncomfortable things I've ever sat in. But I'll tell you what, the food was definitely worth being a little uncomfortable on the bottom here. All right, and the wines, outstanding. The 1999 El Pisan. Uh, this is a vintage that's already somewhat uh, evolved and showing a bit of that animal kind of character. Some dried flowers and earth, red berry fruit, really silky smooth on the tongue. This is a vineyard that was planted in 1945, the El Pisan vineyard, uh, and, and they wanted to make this wine in memory of his grandfather. And um, this is uh, the El Pisan, is the old stone um, used to crush uh, the whatever build, it's a building anyways named El Pisan on the property and uh, very elegant wine I think it's drinking at its peak right now this 1999 no reason to hold on to it as a matter of fact Carlos says that they make their wines to drink young they will age but you can open them up they don't need much decantering time I'd have to differ my opinion differs a little bit about some of his younger wines I think they're much better with several hours in the decanter like the 04 I would have liked to have this wine on the table all night but they served us one glass and they removed it and they served us the next glass and removed it. They did uh, let us keep our, you know, I'm going to serve all five of them at the same time. When you're doing a vertical tasting, you can go back and forth. But unfortunately, this is a small restaurant. They probably didn't have enough glasses for the 23 people to do that as I saw them coming out and washing them as the event went on. The 2004 is a stunner though, man. Wow. Uh, huge bouquet, berries, flowers, crushed rock like minerality, really well endowed and concentrated on the tongue. This wine got that meaty character as well, but as it opens up, um, you notice the tannins. And this wine's got a long layered finish. It is killer. One of my favorite vintages of El Pisan. And then the 07, another elegant vintage. And they lost 30% of the harvest this year. So a very slow life ripening vintage. And uh, a good harvest at the end, though. They made a really drinkable wine, very smooth. And uh, although the wine is still youthful, it's got a lot of nice fruit, very well balanced. And uh, not a blockbuster in size, but lots of nuance, that clay-like minerality coming out at the end. Fine tannins, crushed flowers, most excellent juice. The 2009, Carlos said one of his favorite vintages of El Pisan. I also thought this wine was most excellent. Uh, had lovely, juicy red berry fruit. Uh, some nice uh, uh, kind of new leather, kind of spicy notes there. And uh, that meaty character as well coming out, round tannins. And uh, this wine already drinking nicely, but you can just tell it has everything in proportion. It will last for a long time in your cellar. The 11 Vintage. Um, these guys left the Rio Hot DOC in, 2000, in the 29th of December at the end of 2015. I've never heard of anybody doing that. And uh, I was really surprised, and Carlos came to see us um, a couple days later to explain everything. And, you know, Rioja is one of these areas where there's a lot of cheap wine made with the tag Rioja on it. And these wines are at the top level of quality, not just for Rioja, but anywhere in the world. So they wanted them to stand on their own, similar to what Angelo Gaia did in the 1996 vintage when he left the Barbaresco and Barolo DOC. So uh, something new and developing that's just happened at Artadi. And um, as of the 2015 vintage, they will no longer say Rioja on the label. Okay, back to the 2011. This was a cooler year. And uh, this wine has got that signs of the cooler vintage, nice freshness. Um, it's got a really nice fine tan into the wine and that pretty floral quality as well. A nice long finish, uh, really most excellent juice. This 11, very different from the 2009, but I liked it just as much. All right, well, Carlos stopped by to see us with his new wines. Well, I shouldn't say new wines have been made now, I think for four vintages, these single vineyard wines, which is pretty much all they're going to be doing, the varietal wines, the single vineyard wines, and village wines, I'm sorry, three different lines from our toddy wine these are the top quality and we had the Val de Jeans Val de Jeans and the uh, La Posa 
the uh, Balestreros, and both of these wines are very close by. They're within 50 meters of each other, the two vineyards. Uh, the one, the uh, Val de Gines is facing east, so it gets the morning sun, and the uh, La Posa de la Besteleros is uh, facing west, so it gets the afternoon sun. And man, the soils are the same. Amazing how different these two wines are. The first wine uh, has a beautiful bouquet, fresh flowers, kind of strawberry jam, and lovely incense spice, really forward and appealing, even right after opening. And this wine's rich and concentrated on the tongue, a good amount of that red berry fruit, that spice and that floral character lasting through the finish. Definitely a little lighter, more elegant. The uh, La Posa de la Besteleros, much bigger in size and uh, wonderful extraction in both of these wines, but this one's showing a good deal of that ripe red berry fruit, that pretty floral perfume, those fresh earthy notes and sweet herbs, fat and rich on the tongue. This wine's got an abundance of fruit, and on the second day, even bigger and uh, really showing opening up nicely, and uh, I, I bet you could keep this wine for 10 or 20 years easily. This wine's got a, a nice hand of spice and really big and wonderful freshness at the end, long layered long and layered even better on the second day most excellent juice that's what we had to drink with our friends from our tiny winery i'm your host andrew lampasoni signing off for the wine watch saying remember always drink the good stuff first